Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Headline Amp Fungicide and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Corn School. Today we're going to visit with OMAFRA corn lead Ben Rosser to talk about managing fertility in a corn strip-till system. As Ben notes in this episode, corn growers really do need to take a no-till mindset when practicing strip-till on their farms. So Ben, this is a conventional plot right here. Tell me about the fertility. Yeah, so this is our conventional tillage fertility control. So conventional tillage in this plot, we've got our normal nitrogen program down, but no P and K fertilizer. We're looking for differences in response. This is kind of our baseline for what would happen if we didn't put any P and K fertilizer down. Okay, Ben, we've gone west 10 feet into the neighboring plot. What's going on here? Yeah, so Bernard, this is our spring strip uh, fertility control. So instead of conventional till like the last plot we were in, now we just did spring strips. Same nitrogen and everything else as the rest of the plots, but no P and K applied in this plot here. Yeah. But clearly you can see, you know, when you walk by these plots, clearly not as tall or as growthy or the color that we have, even in that control plot where we did conventional tillage. So why does it tell us here about the difference between conventional and strip-till? Yeah, so it really seems looking at these strip-till plots that you know we're seeing nutrient deficiencies quicker than we are in the, the fertility control in the conventional plot. So it almost seems as if the plants in these control plots for strip-till uh, just aren't as efficient at picking up or accessing nutrients as they are in the conventional tillage plots. And this is the second, t second year I've seen this. So we had, the first time I saw this was last year with some plots at Alora. I thought it was pretty neat when you, draw, when you walk through and see the differences between plots. Um, but again, this trial here is at Alora in 2021 now, and I've seen the exact same thing between the conventional and strip-till fertility control plots. And Ben, this is not really anything new here. Tony Vine did a lot of research on this before he, he went on down to Purdue University, right? Yeah, that's right. So back in the 90s, there was uh, some research that had been done in Ontario, that time looking at no-till corn. And kind of the message what, at that point was, you know, when you're comparing no-till to conventional tillage corn, the fertility, even for, you know, potassium and things like that, uh, is much more important in that no-till scenario than what there is in a, a, a moldboard plow scenario. So that seems to also show through in this in the strip till corn that you know fertility might be more important or just similar to what it is in no till. You know, we almost maybe need that no till mindset with strip till in terms of fertility, getting good placement and having a fertilizer package there for strip till, um, like we think about in no till compared to what we're used to in conventional till. Awesome stuff, uh, Ben. Great to have you on the corn school. Great insights. Thank you, Bernard. <laughs>